I mean it, I mean it. Um, hello, my name is Ernest Siva. Siva is a Koya word meaning water, spring. The whole name at one time was Isil Siva Yawish, that is Coyote, Isil Coyote, Siva, water, Yawish, the keeper or the holder, the custodian of, of the water, of Coyote's water. And that name uh, came to me uh, later in life. I, I uh, found out, uh, heard stories about Isil Siva, and that's in the mountains uh, southeast of uh, Idlewild Arts. And my cousins would tell me about Isil Siva and how their, their relatives would go there and climb there because it was, a, it was a, a wonderful climb, a hike. And I was able later, through Idle Arts, uh, to go to East Yosiva. And uh, so that, that was a, a time in my life. It was like a dream to, to go to home uh, that was uh, from the past before my time. It was only a dream. And it seems like my life uh, in connection with the mountains has, has been a dream. Kuruva is, is the name of the uh, Idlewild, uh, meaning meeting place, or you could say gathering place, like the birds, kuruk, they, 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 they fall out of the air as if they, they were gathering to have a meeting. And that's how uh, our people would do the Serrano and the Kuya and neighboring tribes from the south and west. So what I'm talking about is, is, uh, uh, is somewhat of a dream times I, I would think of, of uh, how we got here and, and so forth. And it's all still flowing and has, flow, has, has brought us to Banning, California, where the, our center is. The center meaning where we are, that is t today, uh, at the Ramon Learning Center. And Ramon was my mother's maiden name. My, and her younger sister, my new year, my younger aunt, um, was the last remaining speaker of our language, fluent, fluent speaker. And so uh, when she Toward the end of her life, she had um, connected with a linguist, and it was, it was it took some doing to get the connection, and that's a long story also. But she um, decided that it was on her shoulders to carry on, that pass on whatever she could to those who were going to be wondering those, who, those relatives who would be wondering who we are and what was our life like, what was the language like, all those things. And, and certainly, Aunt Dot, as I refer to her, had thoughts like I have before and since then, and that was thoughts of, of what the elders were telling us, statements they made in the past that has been with us through life. And Francisco Morongo was, was my great-grandfather on the Serrano side of the family. Serrano is a Spanish word meaning um, hillbilly mountain dwellers, and the Spanish 
gave us that name. I mentioned the elders and what they had said in the past to the people. It was always advice. And during the time of great change, the, the, I guess the younger families weren't working hard to learn, to adjust, and so on. As you can imagine, there is, was, was all sorts of problems with adjusting and wondering how to live, what to do, and so on. And he, he uh, was advising the younger families, and he said, you uh, young, younger folks with families, going to have to work hard in learning this new way and learn whatever it is. Everything is new or different. Uh, and he had mentioned, and we all know, uh, that things are changing. And in our story, that this was going to happen. We have a prophecy for that. Well, he said, Work as hard as you can, and you will, you'll succeed. But if you don't, uh, then then you'll be drifting, because you need also to never forget your language, never forget where you came from. And and that has carried on to us who heard that and paid attention to it, and and it still echoes on. And we uh, teach at the center, our Dorsum Moon Learning Center, the language, the history, the culture, whenever we have a chance to share with others. Because as, as uh, great-grandpa Francisco, with his life, he, he gave, showed us the way because at, also around that time, maybe later, the Kuiya, past Kuiya, the Kuiya is my other side of the family. I, my dad is from the mountains, so he was mountain Kuiya. But here in, in the past, we had the, the past Kuiya and they had, for some reason, lost their songs. I mentioned that songs because it's so important and still is important to our people. The songs carry knowledge. It carries a key to who we are, to the past, and so on. So as time has gone by, the, songs have drifted away because most of the songs fit uh, in with other things that had to happen and those were the, the rituals and uh, things that the people did yearly to carry on their way, their, their history, their religion, all sorts of things that, uh, that had to be learned by younger people. Because this is, was, was the um, oral tradition in, that, that we, we refer to. And it's, uh, with, with its drawbacks, and those, of course, were, were memory and speakers and so on. So the songs had the key, have the key, because we still have some songs, bird songs that we have become very popular with youngsters today on the different reservations. And that even though it's a hard to understand for youngsters who don't know the languages. I say languages because the songs are in at least two different languages, the Serrano and the Kauia. Kauia is uh, 
uh, uh, forgotten word also. That is, uh, people say it means, it meant uh, master, it, it, it meant powerful one, or something like that. And we don't, haven't really, uh, know, don't really know about that. I grew up in the household of uh, Serrano speakers. My mother's uh, fa uh, father was uh, a paha, and the paha was the keeper of traditions of, of knowledge and songs. And uh, uh, everything that was important that, to the people. So uh, whatever happened uh, to these folks who had that, were, uh, carried those things with them. And, and if they didn't pass it on, then uh, there was trouble. And it so happened to the past Kauia, as I began to tell. They came to Francisco Morongo and said, may we use your songs? We can't sing all night anymore. And so either it wasn't taught, or if it was taught, uh, the, the, the person who received it was ill or, or died or something happened. But that was tr quite tragic for the people. And so Francisco said, his name was Lamsa. He said, you, of course you, can, you may use these, these songs. They're not my songs, they're the Creator's songs. They're for everyone. They're for all of God's children. And from that time, the Pascalia began singing our, our songs, that is the Serrano songs, for a certain portion of, the, of that which was needed to carry on. And at, this, at that point, I think it was uh, the creation story and it was used for funerals and so on. And, and so, besides him doing that, his, his uh, job, that is uh, Francisco Morongo, was a kika. And the kika was the keeper of the house, the ceremonial house. And, and that, along with the sacred bundle, were needed by the people to run their business, to run the, everything that was important. So the singers, if they knew all the songs, they still couldn't do their job if, if the, there were the other two item, items weren't in place. And we lived, that is, I lived to see the, that happen when things were changing, how um, the house had to be burned down, that is the ceremonial house, because the kika was, was gone. In this case, it was a lady, our grand aunt, Sarah Martin, who lived all her life here at, at, at Morongo, and, and uh, was instrumental also in passing on history, knowledge, and language to her, her uh, in her way, and that was by working with the linguist Kenneth, Kenneth Hill, who uh, was uh, doing his work at UCLA, and he would come out and, and work with uh, Aunt Sarah. And Aunt Sarah was, was my uh, great grand aunt. Well, grand aunt. Uh, her father was Francisco's younger brother. His name was um, uh, John Morongo and, and was one of the great leaders of the people. He, he was chosen because of his uh, knowledge of languages and he, he adjusted and learned and he spoke English and 
even some French, I think. Um, he was educated in, in, uh, and w wanted to make sure that, that uh, we, these people carried on uh, the, the way that was given us, and that was to learn younger brother's new way, as told in, the, in our prophecy. So all these little bits and pieces uh, came nagging in, uh, in my life and uh, uh, pushed me in the direction to carry on by, by uh, having not too hard to convince my wife that we, we should uh, do something about uh, carrying on, uh, uh, having a place, a center, a room, a, a building, whatever, to, to carry on the work of our aunt who took it on her shoulders to, to uh, start this sort of thing. And, and yeah, she, in turn, I think looked to her, her aunt, Sarah, who had already opened the door uh, about sharing language. And so it played out uh, well and pointed us in, in the direction that we're carrying on now in, in the best way we can. And um, my connection with uh, our connection with Idlewild Arts was so important because it opened the door for learning. Uh, I was a saxophone player in high school, in, in grade school, and my mother had uh, mentioned the word saxophone. She heard a, a, a recording. She said, oh, I think that's a tenor saxophone. And that stuck in my mind. And so when I had a chance to borrow a, an instrument from the school, I did that, brought it home and, and uh, to the re reservation where I grew up, Morongo Reservation, and uh, uh, surprised everyone with, a, with a, an instrument. And uh, it was during Christmas vacation, uh, during, during which time um, I played a lot of saxophone. And in fact, I, I, I uh, made an indentation on my lip because uh, I was, uh, didn't have uh, um, exact instruction how the embouchure was to be done. And, and I, I had my, my teeth were, and my lip was over my teeth as I played the instrument. And I, <laughs> I, I have a scar there. Uh, anyway, what I'm saying is that I, I, I grew with the instrument and became a, a saxophone player. And even at that time, in that short time, to come back to when school began in session after the holidays, I surprised uh, the teacher and all everyone else in, in the band. And I, I became a leader uh, because of my interest in work uh, with a saxophone. And it, it took me many places. And one was um, to be attracted to Idlewild Arts because um, Max Krohn, who was uh, the founder, co-founder of Isamata, Idlewild School of Music and the Arts, he brought a film down and he gave a little talk to our, our band and, and made a pitch and it sounded, it, I just became interested, uh, but didn't do anything about it. But the senior in our uh, band was a drummer and Norman Eichel was his name. He became an Isomaten by, by going there for a session, maybe more than one year. And he would come back with stories about it. And he, he arranged uh, for our band to, to play for a dance at, 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 uh, on one Saturday evening 
in, in Idlewild. And I, it, uh, first of all, the <laughs> my teammates in the band had to come and uh, retrieve me from the res. I was minding my own business, uh, probably doing nothing <laughs> during one summer. And uh, 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 they showed up on my doorstep, uh, two saxophone players. Uh, and I can't think of their name right now, their names, but they came to retrieve me for their, this job or a, like, a gig at I, I Samada. And I didn't you know what I was getting into, but I, I connect, made the connection. It's that place that we were shown on a, on a movie and so on, you know. And uh, sure enough, it was, uh, the kids were having a great time from uh, all over, wherever they came from. And I think most of, them, most of them were from the city, from Los Angeles. And that started the, 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 the connection. And when, it was, when I had, when the next year, there were scholarships offered, the, the women's club and the band boosters and the, uh, I can't remember what the th uh, other service club was, but uh, Richard Bull, my trumpet playing buddy, we decided let, let's uh, apply for scholarships. So we did and we got scholarships and, and others in, from Banning uh, went and we had a, such a great time and were hooked for, for life. And I managed to return uh, almost every summer uh, by, by being offered uh, uh, to work in the uh, kitchen, washing dishes, dishes, pots and pans or whatever. Uh, uh, actually, I was recruited by uh, uh, the maintenance people they were uh, always had driving around on a jeep and it looked like fun, so I, they offered me to, to stay there one a week in the, in the summer. And when I hadn't really intended to, it wasn't in my plans, but they offered uh, me a job for the rest of the summer and I, I did. And then the lady in the, in the kitchen, Mildred Matthews, said, would you like to work for me and work all summer next year? And that did it. And so every year from that time, I, I returned to Idlewild Arts and experienced the, the magic of the, the summers that offered the different courses with different people. And the people were so interesting. The, the dance, uh, folk dance, ballet, modern dance, photography, and just uh, all sorts of wonderful things. And they had uh, uh, also the arts of the, the Native American and uh, wonderful artists. Every, everyone who came there were interested in the arts and, and so it was, was a place to grow. And, and I heard at, uh, during the um, high school band and orchestra time. Before I became a singer, I heard uh, uh, the choir sing. It was a small choir and they asked me to join them and I, I, I didn't sing. I said, oh, I, I, I'm a tenor because my voice was high at the time. And, and uh, I, so I didn't sing, but I, I uh, uh, played the saxophone there in the band. But I discovered hearing strings, a string quartet play one evening. And they played music that I heard on the radio when I was younger, I was in grade school. After school, we, I would uh, rush to the radio and turn it on and, I, and I'd be eating a bowl of cereal and listening to favorite programs, f 15 minutes in length. And uh, one was the, the um, I forget about the title now, but the theme song was 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 the music that I I couldn't figure out what was making the sound, 
a scratchy, scratchy sound on, on the recording, on, on, on the piece, and I, I discovered that it was a movement from a Haydn quartet. And, and uh, later, uh, when, I, when I was there in high school uh, and college, and, and later on as a staff member uh, coaching the tenors or basses, and, and so it was just a, a wonderful ride, but a wonderful connection. And the, con the connection part of it was so important to me because I learned to sing in the, by joining the choir. Uh, for, first of all, I t attended the community college in San Bernardino, where the, 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 the uh, Indians, that was the, uh, the, uh, the name of the uh, mascot, and so we were the, the Indians, and so I, I fit right in, of course. Um, so discovering uh, Isomata, it, it was uh, like magic, you know, it, it played out in my life. And uh, as I was there, I, I learned to sing in the choir. Well, I, I started to tell you about the community uh, Indians, that is the um, two-year school in, in San Bernardino and where uh, many of our uh, classes from banding would go, especially for music, because they had uh, a reputation uh, of fine, having fine instructors. One was Russell Baldwin. He was a tall uh, uh, theory teacher. And again, Norman Eichel, my, my, one of my mentors, said, make sure you, you, you take uh, uh, Russell Baldwin's classes. And, and sure enough, uh, he was like, a, like a, an uncle or a grandpa. He, was in, he had interest in, in the students, and he would straighten up anyone who was uh, not working, including my friend Richard Bowe, said, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Baldwin gave me a talk, and I straightened up. He said, he said you're... You're, you're not working hard, you're, not, you're, you're, you're wasting time, you know. <laughs> and, and then uh, he also uh, became a, a one to, to go to for questions of not only music, but different things, as I recall. He was that sort of person. Uh, but he inspired us to, uh, you know, to go to, to the university uh, to UCLA or USC and, uh, and so on. And the band director uh, was a trombone player, very fine. We had a commercial band that we'd play for dances and different things. And I uh, met so many uh, fine musicians there and they became instructors in, co in co local colleges. Uh, but I, in the back of my mind, I was always going to go to uh, SC because that's that's where you know, Norman was saying also come to SC because they they have the greatest orchestra, the greatest and uh, and so on and and so I was following and following in the footsteps of of uh, wonderful uh, leaders and. Uh, I don't know if Norman is still living, but his fi family is, is gone. And we, when, <laughs> well, well, our, our uh, uh, band playing for that uh, uh, time uh, uh, of celebration in, in Isabada was, was opener. Uh, but but it, his uh, connection with SC was to, to um, bring down one of his buddies to, to, who was a very fine jazz musician and, and just to give me a boost and, and, and because th that's exactly, exactly what happened. Um, uh, I was uh, connected then uh, deciding to go to SC to, uh, to School of Music. But how could I make that happen? Well, through Isomata, Idlewild Arts, um, 
the uh, instructors were all mostly from from SC, and um, uh, Mr. Holmes, the uh, choir director, was the one who inspired me with a choir, as he would uh, ta give talks. He was he would talk about the music, and and I uh, latched on to the lingo, and and uh, one time I recall. And, and he was giving his, his uh, lead up to a, a section, and I said, pow, and, and, that, and that's what he was going to say. And, and he recognized that, and it was, we laughed, all laughed about it, as I recall. The climax in, in a certain spot in the music was, he, was what he was referring to, and, and I said, I stole his thunder, and that was funny. But it became such an such a, um, amazing, uh, influence because uh, he had um, introduced magical singing uh, to, to, to the West, as far as I know, and, and um, at Hollywood High, he, he made a, them famous and then moved on to Beverly, Beverly Hills High School. And one time in, our, in this history, uh, with our, my connection with the choir and with the Mr. Holmes and singing, he, he said, um, would you like to come out? Uh, I, I, I said, uh, what do you mean? So would you like to come, come and sh uh, join and, and, and uh, teach, uh, student teach at Beverly? <laughs> I said, sure. And I, I, you know, it was all, you know, this was all new. And it, it surely was, because I had to, uh, we had to convince uh, Ralph Rush, the, the, the um, I guess he was dean at the time of School of Music, and and he he said, well anyway, everyone everyone had to pull pull the strings uh, to make things work, and it did. But before that, I'm, I jumped over the, the the musical experience I had in the choir. We we sang. Um, the Mozart Requiem, for one, but one of the other pieces was uh, introduced by I Sabat, uh West Coast um, introduction to Puccini's uh, Messa de Gloria. Now I learned later uh, that uh, Robert Shaw had, had brought it to San Diego State, uh, but I, I think that we preceded that, so uh, some little recognition uh, needed to be done, needs to be done there. But the Puccini Messa de Gloria is a piece that was uh, written when he was 17 years old uh, as a graduation piece. And, and it was so, uh, it stuck with me through life that when I had a chance to perform it, we did in, in, in uh, uh, with the church choir in in Los Angeles, West Los Angeles, another uh, connection with uh, I Idlewild. Uh, <coughs> um, there's so many stories that uh, that I'm telling uh, that that I have to also mention that in our way uh, that I it's kind of a uh, re realized anyway that uh, our way, the, 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 voc the um, oral tradition uh, was the use of uh, telling stories. And the stories were, were always, or for the most part, uh, instruction for, for the listener and these yeah, younger folks to learn their way, to, to learn how to behave or different things. Uh, the, the spiritual side of life, and so on, and so, a, as I in my my uh, travels in, in my life, in my experience, in learning about music, uh, and uh, later on in life about our culture, uh, uh, the, our language, and in connection with the learning center here. Uh, was to uh, realize what the stories were were saying and and 
and what, what uh, messages and things that were important. One learned from, from almost every story that were, was told. Uh, beginning with my, uh, my grandpa, Pete, who really didn't, wasn't uh, uh, paying much attention to me because uh, I was uh, like a, a, a busybody, I guess. And, and I was the only one around with him at one point. I don't know where the others were. Maybe my sister was at school. She's five and a half years older than I. And, I, I, and, the, and my cousins, I don't know where they were, but my grandpa would be always doing something important that, that, uh, in his, his way. He's, he would be making something, cleaning something, uh, doing something that was interesting. And one morning, uh, in, uh, uh, it, be- it seems like it was before breakfast, because it was early, he was, uh, had come out with a can full of B, uh, buttons and poured it on the ground and spread the, spread the uh, buttons out on the, on the ground. And I was helping him spread them out and, and pushed it and he started, he was whistling, humming, and then he started singing. Uh, I looked over and he, he was doing this over, uh, making that motion over a dragonfly that had landed and was asleep. And, and so I went over and did the same thing, and then the insect didn't fly away. And that stuck with me, and the, the tune, I, I forgot l- later, and then relearned it from a cousin who, an older person, a, a, a cousin of mine who, when he heard me tell the story of, of the dragonfly um, and, and sing the tune, he said, and I, I, I'm jumping uh, ahead here. Uh, uh, he said, um, I, w- I used that to put my kids to sleep, that song. And that was the Lloyd Marcus was his name. And his, I guess his dad uh, had sung that to him and other songs that we shared. But uh, in this early time with my grandpa, he uh, introduced that song that stuck with me through life. Uh, Ushkana is, is the word, and it, um, in Kuwia or Sharano, I, I don't know what it means, but it's part of the song. And, it, and he's, he, he started singing Ushkana, Ushkana, oh, Ushkana, Ushkana, oh. And the, the tune, as I say, uh, became different when I introduced it to kids in Idlewild because I would visit the di- different uh, classes, different age groups in Isomata. Uh, there were the hummingbirds and the uh, uh, elves and, and so on. And I don't know wh- which group it was that, that I w- would sing that song song to, I guess it was the eighth graders, because uh, um, one, of my, one of the, uh, my, our friends uh, who lives in uh, Tucson, Cynthia, made a connection with, with us here at the center, and, and, and uh, of course thought of that the Ushkana song, but but she said, you know, you you sang a different tune. <laughs> so as I recall, I did, and I think Max Krohn recorded it and took it to to Germany with him to share with the or wherever he was going there, that the the uh, Indian lullaby with my tune, not not the, the original tune. So I. I forget to tell that part of the story, uh, but singing our songs became 
um, important because of the need as I was teaching. I, I taught in, uh, my first teaching job was in Palm Springs at Raymond Cree Junior High School. And they, I noticed that the kids didn't really seem to appreciate where they were living in Palm Springs. They were at the foot of uh, Ayakaich. Uh, Ayakaich is, is Mount San Jacinto. And, and so I, I taught them the, the, uh, and told the story of the dragonfly. <clears throat> that, that if you are, if you sing that song to the dragonfly, or even if you say the word, Ushkana, Ushkana, oh, oh, just say the word over and over again, the dragonfly will stay, it'll come to you. If it's flying, it'll come closer. And if it, and it land on your hand if you let it, and, and that's, that's what I, I would tell the kids. And uh, I used it throughout life. In fact, uh, June, when my wife and I met in, uh, in the choir at USC, uh, we became good friends. And I, I said, well, I'll show you the res to Banning, the, uh, uh, the past, and where I grew up, and our house. And, so we did, we came down uh, one Saturday, I guess it was, and I took her out to the Morongo Res and took her to our, our house, which was empty. It was still there, and, and she was enthralled with the whole thing. And on the floor, there was a mu music paper. It was, a, uh, I think, uh, some exercise that it did for the call, um, uh, music class at, at um, San Bernardino Valley College. Uh, that's the name of this two-year school, and it's still there, but there are no longer the Indians that became the Wolverines. Uh, but they may have returned to Indians, I'm not sure. But the, the music had an A on it. <laughs> And so, so we got a kick out of that, and, and, and June uh, was enthralled with that. Then we went to Idlewild. We drove up uh, the mountain to Idlewild Arts, and no one was there, of course. It was, uh, I don't know what time of year it was, um, but I showed her Strawberry Creek and told her there's uh, about the dragonflies that were flying around. I said, there's a song for this. And I sang it, and I held up my hand, and the dragonfly landed on my hand. And that's, I said, it's good luck, and, and, and it's, it's good sign if that happens. And so she was amazed at that, being a, a, a biologist. <laughs> so she, be, she became a, a true believer. And I've, I've told people about that since, and I, I say, now she believes everything I tell her. And one time I did that, uh, and a man is sitting in the back said, sure, she does. <laughs> and uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's how our music is, it's, it's magical. And all music is magical, as, as, as you probably know already. And I'm uh, carrying on because uh, the, the story of music and the arts and life is, is full of magic. We are always having wonderful experiences, uh, performing, bringing to life choral music. We had a w wonderful concert this, this for the first time in two years uh, at, in our local church, the Pass Chorale, which, which I direct in June sings and she's a, our librarian and does everything that I can't do. Uh, and we, we had a wonderful uh, audience, a good turnout. We were wondering um, just how it was going to work, having people come together and then later join, well, sing, singing, ending with the uh, orchestra and everyone doing 
Christmas carols, and then having a reception with, with food, regular food, and not going away empty-handed, and everyone in good cheer. It was a wonderful experience. And I mention this because we're also going to be doing some magic with Puccini's Messa de Gloria. We actually did the Curia and the Gloria for one Christmas celebration a couple of years ago, and the orchestra folks wanted to play the whole thing. And I said, well, we will do the whole thing in, the, in, in May. And so this coming May, we intend to, to, uh, to perform the, that wonderful piece I learned in, at Idol Arts and make a wonderful connection for a lot of things. Well, another song that, that I shared, that I uh, share with my teaching first job was to teach him the little bear song. And we added Ayakaich in the chorus. Ayakaich is the name of, uh, of uh, Mount San Jacinto because it's, it, it's a magical mountain. It has a, a, it, ha, it has the um, spirit of uh, Taksh is there. It's eternal. But we rarely talk about Taksh. That, that's our way anyway. But um, the medicine people talk about going there to learn their songs. And of course, around, uh, throughout uh, the different levels of elevation, of elevation there are the um, life zones producing medicine and food and so on are, are to be found in the area and to draw people there at the right time. So that is, was one reason why I was able to, why I did add the, the um, chorus to bear that Ayakaich. Ayakaich means to, from Ayakaich we receive many things. And then one can talk about the, um, whether it's food or medicine or songs or, or any inspiration. And about the uh, song part of it, my cousin uh, Alvino Siva w had a neighbor, a medicine man, who, who was famous for his, his work. He lived to be 126 years. And um, actually, we have a little story on, on, uh, c captured on, the, um, on a, the back of a, the story of this place, uh, this place being <coughs> opened as a post office in Banning. And then it became different uh, stores and uh, it turned into our our meeting place now the uh, hall for idol for <laughs> uh, Ramon Learning Center and it was a naming gift uh, from our neighboring tribe uh, reservation uh, the pine tree people Yohavitam I. Um, mention that this, uh, this mountain being so important, we're going to have a, a um, program that will, it will address the different uh, things about uh, Ayakaich. And we're going to do that here this, this year. Uh, it'll be uh, uh, open to the public and to the school class, classes from uh, from um, Morongo School will take part, 
and we'll be using our language and whatever uh, we can to, to, to help with the program. Well, the song that I uh, was introducing in, in a roundabout way was a little bear song. And again, out on the Moronka Res, my, our house was, uh, actually, actually it was my grandpa's house, Pete Ramon. The neighboring house was the home of our grand aunt, my um, oldest aunt, uh, Julia Nutz. Julia Horseman and her family. That was my mother's older sister. So we had New Year, um, Dorothy Ramon, in connection with us, our center. And then with the song, our aunt, older aunt, who told a lot of stories and, uh, about the bird songs and, and was always singing. She, she uh, sang hymns from the the Moravians and from uh, that she learned and uh, taught us th different things. And in the evening, in the summer, we slept outside, the families would, and we'd gather over at, 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 at their place and she would start singing and telling, talking about things, but she'd always talk about the, 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 uh, the the bird songs. Well, the, the lullaby, um, the little bear song, uh, uh, had to do with uh, someone's birthday uh, in her, her family. I don't know who, whose birthday it was in the summertime, but that was, it was the first time she baked a chocolate cake that we had in, in a wood stove now, all of that was magical to me because uh, I've never tasted anything so wonderful since in that chocolate cake eating business. My sister uh, was present also, and she remembers that. Anyway, uh, so Aunt started to tell us said so there was this little bear who was misbehaving and he was making noise, keeping the people awake. They wanted to sleep. They were in the den, a family of bears. And so there's brothers and sisters who were older. They said, let's, let's uh, get, tell him to go out and play. So they said, go out and play. You're making too much noise. So he went outside and then they, they wouldn't let him back in when it was time. When it was time, he was getting tired and it was getting cold because uh, in the song, he says, Ucha, ucha, tirvich, kaiko, haipet, no koman. Cold, cold ground, I'll never sleep. And then the wind is blowing, he says, Ucha, ucha, shrivet, ucha, ucha, shrivet. Cold, cold wind, cold, cold wind, kaiko, haipet, haipet, no koman. Cold, cold wind, I'll never sleep. Then I added another verse about the sun because in Palm Springs I wanted to make the connection for my students. They didn't know what I was doing. I just, I just sprang it on them one time. I said this, uh, the sun came up, it was too hot. So he said, Urcher, Urcher, Thamit, hot, hot sun, Kaikon, Haipen, Nokoma, I'll never sleep. So that became the part of the song. And then added the chorus, Aya Kaich, Aya Kaich, Aya Kaich, Aya Kaich. Aya Kaich is this magical mountain called San, Mount San Asino, where people go to get things, go to receive things, inspiration, different experiences, and in the old time, People would go there to gather food, the different plants, or go there for medicine. Of course, you had to know where and when, and the people did because that was our way. And uh, uh, every family would know how to do that in the old times. And in modern times, people go there for 
during the Idlewild Arts time for, for learning and experiencing the arts and themselves in the arts, performing or making art. So in our magical world, it's all is, is wonderful and makes a nice uh, thing to talk about. The song, this is my, I added the rattle to it because uh, it seemed to fit. And this rattle that I'm holding is a traditional rattle that our people used. There were different types of rattles for different songs, types of songs, so which are no longer used. Now, the gourd rattle that was borrowed from the South became, has become the main instrument for the bird song of today. And this particular one was not put together like it is. My father had collected uh, the the uh, gourd and the, the wood for the, the uh, handle and the seeds from the um, fan palm seeds. That, that's what makes the sound. But he had it in a box and I never had put it together. So when he uh, passed on, my stepmother took it to, to her nephew, um, a singer, one of the, the bird singers at the time. And he put it together. He told me the reason why it comes through the top is because there wasn't an, enough lip at the, on the bottom to, to make it secure. So I had to go through and make it secure from the top. And so it's sturdy and, uh, and was never used uh, until I uh, made use of it. And so I keep it in a, a nice place where it will go for a long time. So a little bear song with an added chorus that Raymond Creed Junior High School sang it on tour. And then later on in life, the, the the USC chamber singers sang it in uh, Pullman in, in Washington, somewhere we went on tour. I, m I remember a teacher coming up and saying, I'd like to add that song, <laughs> as teachers would, would do. I know.
That's the little bear song. Thank you for listening, and, and I had fun talking about past things that were at the time wonderful, and they, they, when you think about it, for me, they're wonderful again. Brings back great memories and wonderful things that happened, important things, very important in my life. And we connect it with uh, Idlewild, Isabada, Idlewild Arts, and Ayakaich in general. And I want to thank my wife, June, for, for being my helper and in life. We've done all sorts of things, and we're still doing wonderful, important things with the center and with making music in the past, and we'll keep carrying on. Thank you very much.